Hello, hello, it is the Scottish Investor, how you all doing? This is my YouTube channel where I outline my free trade, Stocks and Shares ISA. Um, today, in this episode, we're going to be touching on a few subjects. We are going to be touching on a stock that I bought that I forgot to mention the other day, also a wee bit of news, and then getting into the kind of main subject of today, which is property, with uh, a few people requesting information on what my plan was for 2020 going into the property market. So yeah, let's just get into this quick and we'll run through the stock that I forgot to mention. That is Activision Blizzard. Uh, I bought one share. That was around kind of November time. We're up 10.5%. Uh, if you don't know, there was a wee bit of bad news come out with Activision. There was one big competition that they had over in Asia. I can't remember what game it was. Anyway, the winner in his speech condemned China for the treatment of the people of Hong Kong um, and Activision, instead of supporting the player in his political message, shat the bed and subsequently banned the player from playing in future competitions and withdrew his winner's check. Now, as I said before, uh, this is not a political channel. Uh, this is just an investment channel. I don't take much notice of politics. It's, I've got my own views um, that really we don't matter. But anyway, this is not political, so we'll not get into that. Um, yeah, so Activision, you can kind of see where they're coming from. China is a massive, massive market for them. Do you really want to upset the apple cart over there and do really more damage to your business or whatnot there in a kind of catch 22 position but yep it was bad news so i invested in and i am up 10 and a half percent so that is a good example of taking advantage of news not the fundamentals of the company taking any hit or whatever just a wee bit of news bad news bang in so that is something that i've learned in 2019 is yeah take advantage of bad news really oh no we don't want to stop recording we want to go back um, the wee bit of news um, that I wanted to touch on, which I found interesting, was um, back when Apple released the first generation iPod, uh, it was $399 to purchase. Now, if instead of purchasing the physical iPod, uh, if you'd have invested that $399 into Apple stock, the shares today would be worth Sixty-two and a half thousand dollars. Wow. I wonder if that'll load. There you go. Um, so yeah, when the the first generation iPod came out, three hundred ninety-nine dollars. If you'd have instead invested that into shares in Apple, that would be worth sixty-two and a half thousand. And I just it just shows you if you can get lucky and pick out the correct stock. Um, at the correct time and get in and uh, be patient um, and hold on to it. Wow, the returns can be incredible. Um, so yeah, for uh, for Christmas we all want a we all want a, a future Apple stock that would grow the same. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But yeah, let's get into the meat and bones of today's uh, update. We're going to be talking about property. Um, I'll give you a wee backstory first, um, set the scene. I bought a house a couple of years back, managed to go in and do a good bit of work to it, um, and I've added a lot of value to the property. Now, I'm actually self employed, so remortgaging the property to take the equity out of it wasn't a, an option, unfortunately. So, the only way for me to get all the money that was tied up in this one property uh, was to sell the property. So I'll go down the route that I was going to go down and then I'll compare that to the route of me going to a qualified, experienced investment broker. Um, this is a wee bit of advice I'll give you is always ask for advice of people that are where you want to go. You don't want to ask advice of peers or co-workers or people in the office that haven't got experience in investing in assets. I mean, you wouldn't ask a 21 year old what it feels like to be 40. You would ask a 40 year old what it feels like to be 40. You know? So, 
you, you want to be asking people that have walked the walk, that have been there, done it, bought the t-shirt. Um, that's the kind of people you want to lean on for advice, expertise, a mentor that will give you wee tips and tricks along the way um, to do whatever you see yourself doing in the future, what your goals are, where you want to be, because you need to remember as well, everyone's wired differently. Now, there's nothing wrong with a person that wants to work his 95 for the next 50 years and stay in the same house, stay in the same street, surrounded by the same people. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what someone wants to do and that keeps them happy, hey, that's nothing wrong, that's it. No, I mean, you've got to just let people be, but as I said, everyone's wired differently. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of the people that listen to stock portfolios and YouTube channels and podcasts and whatnot about investing in assets, these are the kind of people that are driven to want to change their lives and improve and strive to to make things better for either for themselves or maybe for their family or whatnot. So yeah, everybody's different. So everybody's on their own path. Um, and as I say, you don't want to ask advice of people that are of a different mindset to yourself. You want to ask advice of people that are of the same mindset and of the same thinking, who have got the same goals or have already achieved them goals. So yeah, I ended up speaking to a mortgage advisor, or sorry, an investment advisor, and uh, I'll show you the difference, the value of going to someone. We'll work on multiples of 100,000 for each property. It'll keep it nice and simple. Um, I'll try my best to explain this. Uh, this is about take. 25 million uh, I've tried to do this to try and keep it as simple as possible so yeah we'll give this a proper go so multiples of 100 going down my route that I'd planned to go down um, I would have had to put down 25% for your basic buy to let so that would have been 25,000 here in Scotland you need to pay 4% stamp duty so there would have been another 4,000 would have taken you to 29,000 we'll just add in a thousand for legal fees just to keep it nice and simple that would have been, if I would have went down my route, going down the buy to let, I would have had to lay out, um, sorry, lay out 30,000 uh, for that acquisition. Now, I went to an investment broker, sent him all my details, sent him whatever information he wanted, and within half an hour, this guy has got back to me with a plan of action, a strategy, a plan B as well, follow up, everything, brilliant. Now, his plan, was for me to take the money out of the house and buy my own residential property. Um, now you'll be thinking, I thought you were talking about property investing, why are you talking about buying another place for yourself? I would only need to put down 10%, so the 10% is only 10,000. Because I'm only buying for myself, I don't need to pay stamp duty, so you don't need to worry about that 4,000. And yeah, so I only need 10,000 plus legal fees, so we're at 11,000. Now what he managed to find was in my mortgage, there is a stipulation in it called consent to let, which means that I can stay in the new property for six months and then I've got the right to rent that property out. So instead of me paying 30,000 for a flat that would be able to rent out, I can then wait six months. Oh, there we go. New property for sale. I'll go on and have a wee look at that. Right move. Don't invest in them. This is not investment advice, but maybe one that you should add to your watch list. Um, so yeah, we done that. So after six months, I would then need to buy somewhere else. Again, buy as your residence. I would need to put down 10%, which is 10,000 of the 100,000. Um, because it's your second property, you would then need to put down stamp duty, which would be 4,000. So that would take it to 14 and then add legal fees would be 1,000. So we'll, we'll call it 15,000 for my second property. So going down my route, as I say, I would have had to have put down 30,000 for one buy to let property, but going and getting the advice and reaching out and taking action and uh, getting out of my comfort zone and going and meeting someone who's in the position where I want to be, he's now gave me a strategy to get me two properties for 25 or sorry for 26,000 because it would be 11,000 on the first property, 15,000 on the second. So I would have two properties for 26,000. So I would have two properties and four grand in change going down the route um, of the investment advisor. 
that is the power of going and getting advice off someone that's been there, done it, bought the t-shirt. Um, so yeah, going forward, I'm looking to diversify, not just in my stock market portfolio, I'm looking to diversify into property as well. Um, as you see, you never ever want all your eggs in one basket. Um, as you can see here, I am well diversified. I've got US equities, UK equities, I've got growth stocks, dividend stocks. Um, um, also, I've got my ETFs, there's the S&P, FTSE, emerging markets. I've also got some property in my portfolio. Um, so you want to be well diversified uh, going forward yourself. So I'm just looking diversifying my total asset structure. So I've got my stocks and shares that look to maybe add some bonds uh, before, before too long. And also I will diversify into physical property as well. Now the only kind of thing that I need to weigh up as well is with physical property, it's not liquid. Um, whereas in free trade or whatever, you can sell out your stock and have your money in your bank account the next day. Um, with physical property, it's not as easy to sell out if you need access to that money. So that's why I want to be in both and also speaking to the investment advisor, he recommended that you have a portion of your portfolio in physical property, but at the same time you want to have liquid assets. Um, so yeah, your stock market uh, portfolio as well that you can gain access to should Worst case scenario, you need access to some sort of funds. But yeah, if there's any comments on that, if I didn't explain it uh, clearly enough, if it was hard to follow, leave it in the comments. I'll try and um, give a wee kind of better rundown of what I was trying to get across. If there's any sort of constructive criticism on the, the video or whatnot, debate's healthy. Fire it in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. Apart from that, that is today's video. Um, glad I managed to get that done now because as I say I don't know how many takes I've tried here to get this but yeah thanks for listening and uh, wishing you all uh, happy holidays and good luck in 2020 cheers now bye